You know, when Jesus speak to the crowd, he usually talking parables. He deliberately speak in a manner that they will not To the people. Instead of him to explain, Jesus was just blasting parables. You can imagine a teacher, instead of him to what? Say a parable and explain it, he was just what? He said, The kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like this, the kingdom of God is like this. And the people sat down there and they are okay. <laughs> what did this man say? And the apostles were confused. We thought you should go and explain it very well. And Jesus told them, the mysteries of the kingdom of God is only given to us, to the disciples. Others will speak in parables. And what he said next baffled me. So that they will what? Hear and not understand. See! I must see. I say, ah, Jesus, you are preaching. And you are saying you want to see. <laughs> it sounds like wickedness, isn't it? How can Jesus say, I am teaching? <laughs> so that they will understand. Do you know what I'm trying to say? And he said, yes, you will be saved. Ah. <laughs> and that's what happened when you read the Bible often or not you do not understand it and why is God doing that God is doing that because he will not cast his tail to the world to the spirit serious person. He did it deliberately. The Bible says God opposes the proud. But he gives grace to the world, to the humble. The kingdom of God is set in a way that if you are not serious, you will not see it. You will not access it. Because God is in opposition to you. And I tell you, some of you that are here, God is in opposition to you. There are things you ought to do, but God will blind your eyes simply because of your lackadaisical attitude. That's his nature. He hides things. To all serious people. So if you are going to church and you are the unserious type, you know there are people when they are coming to church, they will just see, they will be looking at their clothes, they will be doing that, they will just be doing anyhow. Someone was telling me the other day, he said he bought new clothes, so he said he will not come to church until the Saturday is nine, he said he will come to church by ten. And he said, when he comes, he will make sure that he sits in the front. <laughs> so he now wore this suit and now pass, 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 pass. He came to the front and all the ladies and pass. See that fine boy. <laughs> These people, you will preach, preach, preach. They will not understand anything. Because the mysteries is given to the sun. If you are in church and you are the one serious type, you are in church for the purpose of what? Attendance. Where there are some people before they are coming, they will say, Oh God, I need your presence today. Let me worship you. I want you to touch me. And when we come to church and say it's time for prayer, you see their prayer is different. 
But there are serious ones, people that pray, they will look in. They will look in. They will look in. That's how you finish the service, you will go. You will not be impacted. Because the mysteries are not given to what? To swine, to pigs. You know a pig does not appreciate it. If you put a, a gold ring on the nose of a pig, the people who have put the nose inside water. Because he does not value it. Except you begin to value the mysteries of God, God will not open your eyes to see them. You will never see them. So there are mysteries of the kingdom. Now I was reading about Paul. And when I did a study of the word mysteries, I noticed something that Paul was a man of mysteries. He's always talking about it was revealed to me. The mystery was revealed to me. The mystery that was hidden. The mystery that was hidden was what was revealed to me. Throughout his writing, Paul was talking about mysteries. And the mysteries are given to serious people. For example, I told you that this mystery of the altars, I read a book by my father in the Lord almost 20 years ago, Apostle Manuel Lukuri. He was discussing altars 20 years ago. I just finished the book. But I never understood anything about what. It's now that I begin to say, okay, it was last year. Around September, when we were about to start this work, and I went to him and said, that's what we are going to start. He put his hand to oil on me and began to pray. When I came back, some things opened up to me naturally. I received an impact. And the book that I read 20 years ago, I think I begin to read it again. And I begin to see things because now I'm ready for them. And those of you who are not ready for all tasks, we will talk and talk and talk and talk. You will still leave this place. You must have, you feel you have been what? Entertained. You've been entertained. You say, God, the guy is an orator. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to do We are here to dispense the mysteries of the kingdom. And one of the mysteries of the kingdom is the mystery of altars. For those of you who are just coming, we are emphasizing that what is an altar? You say an altar is a system of authorization that opens the portal, that links the earth with heaven, that allows transfer of angels, allow transfer of blessings to come to us. When the man raised an altar, that allow an instantaneous transfer. You know the heavens is several light years away from the earth. I hope you know that. But when a target is open, when an altar is raised, someone will speak from heaven and you hear it what? On that instantaneously. An angel means what? He's standing in heaven now. All he needs is to take a step and he's in your world, he's in your room. Because an altar has been what? Open. And we emphasize that these altars are compulsory for us to have an interface with heavens. We emphasize that the altars is what authorized God to come to earth because the earth has been given to man and God cannot come to operate on earth until a man gave him authorization. The Bible said the highest heavens belongs to God, but God, the earth, he has given it to the sons of men. The picture we get is like a rent. You build a house and what? And you what? You give someone rent. Even though it is your house, before you enter that house, you must what? You must receive authorization to enter. Yesterday we emphasized on the issue of what? On the issue of, of Gideon. Gideon was a man of questions. He's a man who looked at God that parted the Red Sea. God that defeated mighty kings. God that Jericho fell. God that made the Jordan to pass. God that did many things. But now you look at his situation and give 
Jacob was always asking questions. He said, God, why are these things happening unto us? Why is there no bound in Gilead? Why are we now oppressed by the people that before, when they hear the name of Israel, they go and they be And the Bible said that God sent an angel to him. And the angel said to him, What? Go to your what? To your father's house. The place that the altar of God is supposed to be lifted. The altar of God has been demolished. And what? An altar to Baal has been raised there. In other words, the devil closed the portal. Where God can reach unto us. There is no man. You know, the Bible is saying, you know, I think in the book of Ezekiel. He said, God sought for a man that we want, who stood in the gap, and he found none. Therefore, what? The people were destroyed. What God is looking for a man that will raise an altar unto him so that the door will be open. In other words, God wanted to help them. God wanted to help them so that they will not go to Babylon captivity. God is anxious to help them. But God cannot come in because there was no system of authorization. And you know what it happened? God says to what Jeremiah raised a song of lamentation. It was God that was undergoing what lamentation. You know what is lamentation? God was crying when people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. It is not in the power of God ability of his power to help us. That's not a problem. In another passage, he said, The hands of the Lord are not what? Too short to help you. But what? Your sin has what? Separated you from God. And I believe, people of God, you need to understand the challenge you have there are places that people are having solutions to them. The poverty that is disturbing you. One day you just open the television, you are listening to news, and someone will say, This thing happened to me, this thing happened to me, this thing happened to me. And you look and say, Ah, God, have mercy. I was saying, Only one of our meeting prayers, I say, I don't want to be sharing too much of testimonies so that some people will not be getting envious of me. Praise the Lord. Because if I come and say, I pray this, it happened. I pray that one, it happened. I pray that one, someone will look and say, Ah, me God, just this one. No, 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 no. What is wrong? The portals are the ones closed. And God is looking for someone that will raise an altar. And I understand that there are different kinds of altars. There's a farm personal altar. That is family order. That is community order. That is citywide order. That is what? Territorial altars. Each altar is built on sacrifice. Each altar is built on what sacrifice? In other words, you know, our plan in this job is to raise an altar that will be large enough. You know, you know the stack here can be small or big. Supposing I want to give you a car and the gate is just small like that, is it possible to enter? For you to receive greater blessings from God, you must have bigger gates, bigger altars. I want to raise a very, very mighty altar that will sustain thousands of people. Because this region, North East, has been under the bondage of devil for so long. There is no ministry in this northeast that I bring forth 
and be changed internationally. Not a single one, if you know tell me. This place has been under the bondage of the enemy. People carry themselves from Gombe, they go to Lagos, they work for deliverance. Is there no God in the Northeast? There is no God in Gombe. But there are no men that have raised altars. There are people who go there, not for them to spend 24 hours to go to Lagos. Is the God that is in Lagos different from the God that is in Gombe? This must stop. It must stop. It must end with our generation of Christians in the Northeast. Because we are going to open a portal. Portal that can accommodate every possibility in God. Every possibility that can be found in God. We are going to open that altar in God. I was saying a composite altar is made of three things. One is prayer, which we discussed yesterday. Prayer. And the verse we hinted much about. The Bible said when Jesus was free, the heavens were open. When Jesus was free, the heavens were open. Prayer opens the altar. A man of persistence. the doors of heaven to allow for a release of the miracles, for a release of revival, for a release of grace. Now challenge us that we must remain a prayer. You know, people can watch series. You can sit down and watch series for four hours, isn't it? In fact, they bring food. You say bring them very fast. You are eating and you are watching what? Series. But we want men that what? The, the series will do what? Maybe the eternal satisfy them. A man, men of, and women of prayer who will stay in the place of prayer and begin to make prayer. In lifestyle. I'm not saying that you should not go to work. And I give the example of the children of the born women. Almost all of them are what? They are men and women of prayer. Two of us. Almost all of them. All the children of the born women are people of prayer. Let me feel that they are not serious. How do I know? Go and check their what? Forehead, you see something black there. Go and check here. You see black. While Christians are snoring, everybody is snoring, sleeping for eight hours, eating every day, doing everything. We are not people of prayer. A man will have a shop. But he knows he has a time of what prayer. Once it is time of prayer, even when you are coming to my team, he what? He loves the show. He prays five times. As if their life, their life revolves around what? Prayer. Small team prayer. Small team prayer. Small team prayer. Small team prayer. But we, now I got angry one day with myself. We are working with a group. And then once it's a time of prayer, they said, well, we are going to pray. And I was the only Christian there. And you continue the work while we go and what? While we go and pray and come back and meet you. From that day, I say it's the life of the devil. You are going to pray, then I will continue working. Then you pray and come back and continue with me. I say, no, I will also pray. Very time in my office, when they say we are going to pray, they go and lock the door and my dad is going to rock and shake the ribbon, push it out until they come back. <laughs> Say, ah, <laughs> you see, I know how to pray. Me, I don't know how to pray. You are telling me I'm going to pray. In fact, let me tell you something. 
And I tell myself that there is no son of a born woman that will pay more than me. No one will pay more than me. I don't know how many hours they say in prayer, but their prayer is like what? Translate me. They are not afraid. Can you say the same thing? As far as I'm concerned, I don't envy their prayer now. Because I am determined to spend more time in prayer than sleeping. Am I saying something? To me, is a cause that I have spent more hours sleeping than I have spent praying. Because prayer is more important than sleeping. If you sleep for eight hours in a day, you know you spend almost what? How many hours do you spend in work? Eight hours. And then you spend eight hours sleeping. You have spent almost half of your life what? Sleeping. God have mercy upon you. God is saying we should raise altars. The second altar is an altar of sacrifice. That's how we emphasize. Altar of sacrifice. When you bring the three altars together, they form a composite altar. So you must be a man of prayer, but you must be a man of sacrifice. In fact, that's what altars are made about. You know, when you build an altar, what do you do with it? You sacrifice on it. So one aspect of what? Of altars is sacrifice. You know, sometimes we, we don't seem to understand. In those days, wealth is measured in what? In cows and what? And rams. That's what the Bible wants to describe how rich Job was. He said Job was a great in the world, in the east, he has what? 10,000 camels. He has what? 10,000 sheep. But now we say you have what? Money, isn't it? In those days, their wealth is measured by their animals. And God will come and say, bring the animal and what? Put it on the altar and what? And burn it to pieces, to ashes. We will not understand the concept. This is his word. Bring your word. Put it on the altar. And burn it towards the ashes. The altar is the place of sacrifice. And what do you sacrifice? You sacrifice your wealth. Bring your wealth. Because wealth is a... That's everything about what you possess in this life is your wealth, isn't it? An altar is a place of sacrifice. Psalm 50, verse 5. Psalm 50, verse 5. me by what? By sacrifice. Without sacrifice, there is no establishment of what? Of covenant with God. You know, there's a difference between a promise and a what? A covenant. A covenant is a higher level where God is committed to your cause. Let's see, I told you about David. I told you about David and Saul. Saul just, yeah, he just, just misfires more. First and was is more. God said, go and kill the Amalekites. And he saw what rams. And he said, Kai, this rams will look good for sacrifice. He doesn't know that you don't take somebody's, <laughs> you don't take somebody's wealth and what? And do sacrifice with it. It's just like you want to give up it. <laughs> and you enter somebody's house and you carry his money and put it in your free box. <laughs> Is that a sacrifice? <clears throat> That's how you mistake. And God says that what? Because you have rejected God, 
because of it, God has rejected you and see David. David saw somebody's wife. He slept with her. Then he killed the husband and married the wife. And he had the audacity to say, God, let the child live. When God said the child would die, God, he was praying then. In spite of that, he said, this is a man after my own heart. Because David understood the principles of what sacrifice and altars. Principles of sacrifice and altars. And the Bible talks something about what? The sure mercies of what? David. Sure mercies of David. David enjoyed mercy beyond understanding. Because he's a man of altar, a man of sacrifice. Gather my sins unto me. Those that have made a covenant with me by what? By sacrifice. You made a covenant with God by sacrifice. 